Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. So I'm coming from a very warm Lincolnshire today. No powder or no makeup, okay? Today's video is going to be a channeling with Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy Anassis. Um, it may be in two parts because I only get 25 minutes on the film and I don't really want to rush it. So if it goes off at the end of about 25 minutes, there will be a part two and I'll go straight and I'll film the part two. I'm a bit of a technophobe with how to stitch videos together so I apologise and I think this is something I need to look at for future videos so I do apologise for that but let's get going. So I'm back to doing channelings again. There is a fly flying about as, you, as per normal but anyway I'm back to doing channelings. I've always been a Jackie Kennedy fan and I actually a few weeks ago, well it was a couple of weeks ago, thinking about who am I going to channel next and I wanted to channel Marilyn Monroe and I got no, Jackie Kennedy, Jackie Kennedy, Jackie Kennedy, it was like okay then and I felt her energy come through very, very faintly and even like yesterday I was, I was kind of concerned because I couldn't really feel into her that much and I thought is it am I meant to be doing this and I, and I sat down I did some notes that I'll share with you and I was like am I meant to be doing this and I sat on my bed last night and I thought am I meant to be channeling Jackie because she seems like such a private person and I actually felt quite in awe of her because I thought I was putting some questions down yesterday and I thought she's not going to like the not not the like she's not going to like the questions I'm asking her because I've kept them respectful but it's almost as though she didn't like prying she liked to say what she wanted to say and what and on her terms and I went onto Instagram I don't follow anything Kennedy even though I'm, I'm interested in the whole Kennedy thing I don't search Kennedy and I don't search Jackie and I don't search Anassis or Bouvier and on my Instagram popped up a picture of Jackie in her wedding dress when I was saying send me a sign that you're happy with this to go ahead and she sent me the sign so okay I'm like we'll do it then so then this morning I'm sat here and I'm getting ready for my group healing and she started to walk around my house and my garden and I could see her walking round and I was like oh my god she's walking around my house I mean my house has just been newly renovated it's new we've just moved in newly renovating you now most of it's new because we got rid of a lot of the old stuff from the old house so nothing to be ashamed of but it's like this is Jackie Kennedy that's lived in palaces you know the White House yachts she's had friends family in palaces castles big houses Highness Port you know Martha's Vineyard and here she's walking around my two bedroom bungalow and she was fascinated and she was in awe of everything she was in awe of how small compared to not not from an ego please bear with me it was almost like this is what and she was talking to me as she was walking around and it was like you're so lucky to live here and i was like what? this is someone that's come from you know big houses she's come from men that she married were, were, were rich you know this is someone that came from wealth she was born into wealth and she was like, you're so lucky to have such a simple life. And I could, I can't even put it into words. It was like, I lived in houses, in the White House, in big houses, yachts, villas, and I never had the happiness. And she wasn't just looking in here. She was looking in houses surrounding. And it was like, I never had the happiness or the simplicity. And like, she, she showed me that, you know, the White House was so noisy and vocal and there was no peace and it was interesting because I ran to the toilet and I left the door open and even that like fascinated her and it was like wow to just be able to walk around barefoot to be able to have your, your to be in here on your own without maids butlers servants um hangers on other people and she showed me herself in the white house with 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 Jack Kennedy and she was in one part, he was in the other, and his butler comes in, or a manservant, and he says something along the lines of, Mrs First Lady, or Madam, it was either Mrs First Lady or Madam, the President would like to speak to you. And she showed me this scene, and it was like, oh, this was a man and wife. This is how they spoke to each other, you know. Mrs First Lady, Mr President would like to speak to you, and he would walk her to the President's office, and she would rat-a-tat-tat on JFK's door, come in. And and it's like that was the life, and it was. As, and she said, you know, you're also lucky to live lives like this, 
that are just so simple with no stresses and strains. And she showed me the elite, the rich of the world, the American aristocracy, like the, the American elite, the, the, everywhere, you're the elite of the world. And she said, you know, on the surface, it looks like, wow, but the sadness, the depression, the mental health issues, the toxicity that is within those circles is scary. It's scary. They're all very badly damaged. Also, as well, this morning, I felt as obviously Jackie was into style and into substance and, you know, beautiful suits and pillar box hats and beautiful pearls and beautiful dresses and hair immaculate. And I felt a little bit channeling her because obviously I like to wear leggings and tops and I've, although I've just started to wear floaty dresses this week because of the heat and I couldn't find anything that I felt was suitable. So I put this dress on and I'm sat there and I just looked down at it and she drew, and she drew my attention to the colours on the dress, okay? And she said, you're wearing my favourite colours, right? And apparently she said to me she loved lemon, she loved burnt orange and we know that she loved pink. Obviously with, you know, the, the, the pillbox hat thing, the, the last suit that she wore as first lady. And it was just fascinating. It was just fascinating how things happen without you even realising it. So let's get on to some of the facts. So she was born on the 28th of July, 1929. She died on the 19th of May, 1994. Interesting, we did the whole Megan and Anne Boleyn thing yesterday. And Megan and Megan got married on the 19th of May. Anne Boleyn died on the 19th of May, and so did Jackie. So I'm feeling as though there may be some past life connections with these, with this soul group. She was first lady from 1961 to 63. And do you know she was 32 when she became the first lady and 34 when she was widowed? I want you to sit with that for a minute. When you compare what we're getting now in the White House, the old men that are coming in, the men that are way into their 50s and beyond, you know, 60s, 70s, heading up to their 80s. And it's the same with the first ladies. This was a young girl. You know, you think of yourself as 32, how inexperienced we are, how naive we are, how young we are. This was a 32-year-old lady, a 32-year-old young girl, a 32-year-old, I don't want to call her a woman. JFK was in his 40s. I think he was 10 or 12 years older than her. Bear that in mind that you're 34 years old and you're sat next to your husband as he is, as he is shot, shot twice three times you know and she actually i was sat here and she actually let me feel what she felt and what she should was she was sat and she was looking in one direction she heard the bang go off and she felt the splatter on her face and she actually let me feel that because she wanted me to try and understand her even now my heart's like woof and it was like oh my god you just don't understand you just can we cannot compute that we cannot compute sitting next to your husband and him being blown to smithereens. Not just once, not just twice, I think it was three times, probably more. And to have to deal with that. And then she tried to escape the car. Um, and then she was pushed back into the car by one of the guards that came, one of the bodyguards that came in. And she's there, she's terrified. They're in this open top car. Her husband's blood gushing everywhere. I'm, being, I'm not holding anything back, by the way, no chance. I want people to understand. The warmth of his blood, the warmth of the, the blood coming from him. The fear, this is your husband, this is not just your husband, this is the president. What's going to be next? My children, my children, my children. She's here, he's, her husband's dying. Um, things are getting dark, things are getting heavy, things are getting intense. She can't trust people. The, she realises very quickly that the people that were there to protect them, I'm going to have to be careful, that they were there to protect them were actually... Not to be trusted. Whoa, you see, I just felt it on my head. I always do this when I, when I go into Kennedy Energy. Um, and it's almost like you can't even comprehend that. You can't comprehend that. And that left so much damage. She actually spoke about PTSD. And she was fascinated with my room as well, with the crystals and the chakra, the chakra cloth I've got out. She said her heart chakra was damaged by the thud of the bullets and the hole it literally jumped out and she also said that her chakra system was damaged anyway because of her upbringing in those circles they didn't talk about chakras and the importance of chakras so she had issues with all her chakra system was damaged and everything and it caused depression it caused anxiety it caused her to be quite cold and aloof and quite disorientated and 
then going into the Kennedy family and the toxicity of Joe, she also showed me um, the evilness of Joe at times and not judging it, but the evilness of him towards the daughter-in-laws, towards his daughters, towards his wife, towards anyone. He perceived anyone that wasn't him as weak. I feel as it's already coming through. He perceived anyone that wasn't him as weak. He was a very weak man. She said he's a very weak man, but he liked to make out everybody else was weak. He was, she's saying he had like little man syndrome. I'm not sure if he was quite sh quite short, but his sons were badly damaged, badly damaged. His sons weren't built for politics. They were quite reckless. All three boys were quite reckless. The three boys that went off into politics, they were quite reckless. And they weren't made, they were quite, and she, she's saying that Jack was quite weak, very weak, for although he had many good points and he's working now in spirit for America, okay? And he's trying to keep certain things balanced and down. In, 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 in his earthly incarnation, because he came from such a powerful father and toxic father, she's saying a lot of the men that were around him as in the White House scared him. He was scared in the White House and he was easily intimidated. So it was quite easy for somebody to come in and talk over him and push him down. And she also says that this is what happens with the presidents. That you, we view the president as a strong man, as a man to look up to, as a leader of a country. She said, but they've all, all of them are very weak, including her husband. All of them are very weak. They would never allow a strong independent man in there. And she said also the women that are married to them are quite weak. Please don't get triggered if you've got a favourite first lady. Anyone watching me, watching this video has to be open minded. And she said she was very weak and she was quite, I think she was actually on some type of medication, injections, medication, antidepressants, um, that kind of dumbed them both down. And it was, she was caught, they were both quite easy to manipulate and she said they are the first, they'll never get a powerful woman in there in this modern world. They'll never be a powerful president, not for, not for a long time, because they can't stand real power. They make it look as though there's a powerful first lady next to them and there's a powerful president, but they're not. None of them have been, not her, not Jack, not anyone, before, during, after. Um... Marriages. Back to my notes. She was married to Jack Kennedy, obviously. Then she married Aristotle Nassis. Um, before she died, her life partner was Maurice Templesman. Um, children, Caroline and John Jr. Um, two died in infancy, so she had issues with postnatal depression. She showed me when John Jr. passed over, and this was really sad. And by the way, he has passed over to all the um, crazies out there at the minute. Anyway, let's move on. Get frustrated with it, I do. <laughs> There's enough crazy out there without making more crazy up. Um, and it's disrespectful as well. She showed me when he passed over and it was very cold. It was very cold. She didn't have a, it feels as though she didn't have a healthy relationship with her children. And it kind of shocked me because I thought, you know, you're a mother, your son comes over, you're going to be, and it wasn't. And she said she had postnatal depression. She struggled to conceive and she had very heavy pregnancies, very, you know, she struggled with miscarriages. And she explained the best way that she could that that has an impact and that, you know, it, you, you work in you know, the Bouviers were not maternal, the Kennedys were not maternal, Aristotle Onassis was not maternal, there was no maternalness around her. You were very cold and very blunt and very, and she said she one of the mistakes she made with Caroline was making her into, she's actually saying she could be quite narcissistic with her children. Um, and she was aware of this energy that kept coming through her and she was aware she wasn't a real maternal mother. Although she she struggles with John Joy, it's weird, it's weird. Um, she seems more closer to Caroline and it's almost like she's watching Caroline's life and for although it's not perfect, it's a lot better than any of the Kennedys that's been before. And out of, she's seen out of all the Kennedys, she has managed to get the most healthiest niche and do something good with her life and I think she thinks it's and I said I she thinks it's because um she's kept away from a lot of the you know, she struggled yeah what is it with John what is it with her son
She saw a lot of Jack's traits in him. She saw a lot of Jack's traits in him. And it was painful to watch. She, yeah, she was terrified. She's saying they were, they were after the Kennedy men, okay? Right? They were after the Kennedy men. And she shut herself off from him. For all the her, my heart is every time I do this family, my heart chakra's like, whoop. Um, they were after, they were after the Kennedy men. Yeah, work in progress. And she had to shut her heart from it. For all that her and Jack didn't have the most loving relationship or marriage, it's she still loved him. There were still parts. She said they had a very complex marriage. And us outsiders would struggle to understand it and she doesn't want to go into the dirt of it and the, the, the shadow of it. But she did love him, but it, she, she it was painful, painful. They both had affairs. They both hurt each other. They, she said there was physical stuff as well. Um, she would hit him, he would hit her. Um, there was a lot of nasty people around them. Um, Peter Lawford, a lot of nasty women hung on to JFK. It was all very, it's almost like she's trying to hold it back from us because she knows that we love Camelot. She knows we love the, 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 the energy of it all and she doesn't want us to absorb it. Um, and she had to shut herself off from John, John, John. Um, I'll call Jack, I'll call, I'll call JFK Senior, the president, Jack. I'll call Chuck, because it was Jack, John, John, yeah. She had to, and she really struggled. And he started to show a lot of the signs that, a lot of JFK's stuff, and she struggled with it. And I'm feeling quite dizzy with that. I'm going to take some water. Um, he was quite reckless as well, apparently. I don't know much about him, only that he was amazingly handsome. He was handsome. Um, she says those were the Bouvier looks. They were not the Kennedy looks, they were the Bouvier jeans. Um, she said physically he was Bouvier and mentally and emotionally he was Kennedy. She said he had split personality issues. He had a lot of Grandad Joe's stuff going on inside him as well. Yeah, I'm looking at that. It was too much. It was too, yeah, it's by the page of pentacles. She was worried about him and she's worried about her grandson. God, what's his name? Oh, I did this in another reading, Jack. Um, she doesn't want any of them to go into politics. She doesn't want to see any of her bloodline go into politics. She, she fears for them because she says, for although Jack had his issues, he also had huge amounts of light. And you, if you say you actually need both to balance it, you need both to balance it because if you're too light, oh, I like this. If you're too light, you won't get into those circles. But if you're too dark, you won't get you won't get liked by the people. So you know she's explaining this to me now. Why a lot of our leaders have such a divide following, you know, because you have to have certain mix to be able to get in. Um, but. They, they do what it's a weird family the Kennedys they hold a lot of light but they hold a lot of dark the Kennedys were, were cursed and this goes way back I mean this is a, this is major stuff and I'm going to do more work on this and we're going to do more videos you know like the role stuff I did yesterday I said we're going to revisit it we are going to revisit it and this video is going to run over so if you're watching this please make sure you go on to part two um her relationship with her son they had very different lives they were she's actually saying actually yeah it was death at the bottom it, it, it the, 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 the two souls that chose to reincarnate as their children were knew full well they were coming into this energy and that Jackie wasn't the most maternal that Jackie had toxic issues that Jackie had probably narcissistic issues as well and I feel quite privileged that she's talking about that that Jack had his issues, that the Kennedy bloodline had its issues. So the children they had were able to deal with that and were quite independent, very independent. And they didn't need each other. They didn't need each other. Although there was love there, they didn't need each other. And there was a respect there. It just, it was difficult. And she's saying mums that have, women that have lost husbands, especially in their young years, when they then go on to see it in their sons, 
it hurts and in order to for her to cope she had to switch it off and become cold she had to become cold um she was worried about the circles he was in she was worried that he was playing too much in things he shouldn't have been playing in and getting involved and she said a lot of the kennedys do this they get involved with stuff that should just be left and it's resulted in this process of young deaths okay um interesting interesting so where are we we've got four minutes um so we've got some questions we'll do that in part two what was it like being married to a kennedy life in the white house death of jfk bobby marriage to aristotle and end of life okay um feels very still she actually showed me herself in the white house yesterday she showed me herself in the rose garden and obviously we know that the rose garden has now been taken out i think they're, they're making plans to get something else going there again out there's some flowers and stuff um she got a lot of peace from that rose garden she got a lot of peace from being out in nature being out near the sea and first ladies need to bring as much joy into their life as possible because there's a lot of dark within that house the white house itself is on cursed land it's got dark portals she showed me rooms in there where there were circles of men powerful men more powerful than the president could ever wish to be it's a heavy heavy place you know when i'm sat in a quiet little bungalow Imagine sitting in a White House where there's telephones going off, there's drama, there's darkness, there's arguments, there's power struggles. And it's, she's saying any White House, any, any ladies, any first ladies in the White House need those quiet corners. And it's interesting, she, she's showing me about... was interesting how we would have got on the car. I don't want to start going into a big thingy and then we have to go out onto it um there's an issue between her and Michelle Obama because she keeps showing me I don't think she likes people dressing as she or trying to make themselves it's the same with millennia she doesn't like it I think that's why this morning it was like don't be daft you don't have to dress like me to channel me you don't have to put pearls on to channel me it's like she doesn't like it the kardashians have done the same you're dressing like her and trying to take it that's absorbing energy that's taking energy be yourself we'll revisit that in the next one okay and um, be yourself and that's the problem with first ladies they're trying to emulate something that went before rather than being themselves and it's energy theft it's soul theft it's and you've got to be careful what you wish for you've got to be careful what you absorb um right i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching and we'll get on with the questions okay bye